Okay, now today is the final, uh, you know, part for solving quadratic expressions and equations, all right? This is the final part, this is part four. Uh, and let's just, you know, go through the other parts that we've been looking at, all right? Now, uh, in the first part, we look at solving quadratic equations by the method of graphing, all right? And it's really simple, think of this boy, every time I made this boy famous, I think, Every time you think of graphing, think of this boy squinting his eyes. Because graphical, solving using graphical method requires you to squint your eyes, all right? So, for example, if you are asked to solve this quadratic equation in a graphical manner, what you can do is just plot out the graph and your, uh, your, your, your solutions are right here, okay? And the other one is here. So, you have two solutions, okay? Um, I'm getting some uh, some feedback that my internet uh, connection is unstable. All right, if I, I'm trying a new spot today, and if my if I keep getting this feedback, I might change halfway through. Please bear with me. All right. Now, so this is the first method of solving uh, uh, quadratic equations by using the graphical method. All right. The second one that we looked at was factorization, and that we did about two weeks ago. And it's really very, very simple. If you're asked to uh, solve this quadratic equation by using factorization, just focus on 5x squared first, and you see that 5x squared equals to 5x times x. All right, then you focus on 7, and you see that 7 is minus 7 times 7. All right, you have to uh, minus 7 times uh, minus 1. All right, so it's minus 1 times minus 7. You have to use minus 1 times minus 7 because of your minus 36 here. All right, and 5, then you cross multiply. 5x times minus 7 is minus 35x. x times minus 1 is minus x. And if you total that up, uh, you get minus 36x. And that means that your factors are staring at you right in your face. Your factors are 5x minus 1 and x minus 7. So here it is. All right, but that's not solving the quadratic equation yet. That's just factorizing the quadratic equation. To solve it, we go uh, further. We say that this is the question 5x squared minus 36x plus 7 equals to 0. This was our question. We have factorized it. So we replace this quadratic equation with the factors. And then after that, uh, we apply the uh, um, zero product property. All right, so we get x equals to 1 over 5 and x equals to 7 for the other factor. So these are our, uh, our, uh, 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 our solutions, 1 over 5 and x equals to 7. All right, and last week, just a week ago, we looked at solving quadratic equations using completing the square, the method called completing the square. So let's uh, say that we are asked to solve this quadratic equation using uh, the completion of squares method, what we will do is just repeat that, and then after that, we transfer the minus 5 over to the other side. So we have five, minus 5, when we transfer it over to the other side, we have 5, all right? And then after that, we half this, all right? And we half it, when we half it, we get a minus 1, and after halving it, we square this, and we get a, we get a 1 here, right? And so what's the significance of this one we add one on both sides all right and when we add one on both sides uh, we get a perfect square tri trinomial all right on the left side this is a trinomial but this is no ordinary trinomial this is a very very special trinomial it's a perfect square trinomial and uh, really we can uh, transform this into x minus one squared. <laughs> Minus one from where did this pop out from? This came from here. The minus one came from here. Uh, x minus one equals to plus or minus square root of six. We square root both sides, and our solutions are, are right down here. All right, our solutions are, are very simply x equals to plus uh, square root of six plus one. When we bring this minus one over, we get a plus one. And this one here is minus square root of six. And when we bring that over, we get a plus one again. All right. So one solution comes from the plus the square root from minus six. The other solution comes from the minus square root of six. All right. So these are our two solutions to this quadratic equation. Now, there's some uh, audio disturbance. If one of you have your um, uh, microphone on, uh, please turn it off. 
Okay. All right. So today we are going to have, uh, you know, so we have, we've solved uh, quadratic equations uh, uh, graphically. We have solved it by factorization, and we have solved it by uh, we have solved it by completing the square. All right. So today we are going to look at uh, the final way, the final method of solving quadratic equations that's using you using quadratic. Uh, uh, you know, the, the formula, all right? And there are going to be two parts. First one, we're going to use quadratic formula, and the second one is going to be uh, word problems. So really, uh, when we say quadratic formula, we refer to this particular formula here. And it's really, really straightforward. I'll show you how to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. It's very, very straightforward. So let's say you're asked to solve this quadratic e equation using the quadratic formula. The first thing you do is to put it in standard form. All right. So here you bring this over and that becomes minus 3x. And you, when you bring that over, that becomes minus 3. And once you have done this, the magical... Uh, the, the magic starts. You can uh, identify your A. A equals to 1. You can identify B. B equals to minus 3. And C equals to minus 3. And this is really all, all right, there is, all right? Because after that, it's just sticking, you know, all of these uh, numbers, A, B, and C, into this quadratic formula. This here is the quadratic formula. So here, when I stick, this, stick all of this in, B here, put a minus 3, b square is a minus 3 square, a is a 1, and c is a minus 3. 2a is a 2 times 1 here. All right? So once, after you have stuck it, you know, all this formula, replace all this uh, a, b, and c with the respective values, all you have to do is tidying up. All right? After this step, it's all a matter of tidying things up. All right? And here you will see that minus, minus 3 is a 3. Minus 3 squared is a 9, and 4 times 1 times minus 3, there's a minus 4 and a minus here, so that becomes a plus 12. So 9 plus 12 is a square root 21. And this is what I mean by tidying up. All right, once you've identified A, E, and C, and you have stuck them in, all you have to do is be very careful, be very conscientious, uh, be very precise and tidy up everything. Your one of your uh, um, one of your uh, solutions has to do with the plus sign, and the other solution has to do with the negative sign. All right, very 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 simple. So one solution is three. The three comes from here plus square root of twenty one over two, and the other one is the three minus square root of twenty one over two. That's it. All right, that's it. These are your two solutions to this quadratic equation. So let's look at another, uh, another question, okay? Again, um, you know, bring this minus 5x over this side, and that becomes plus 5x, all right? And once you have done that, identify A, B, and C. A is a 1, B is a 5, and C is a 5 as well, all right? And then, you know, just pop out your quadratic formula and replace uh, the values. So B is a 5, so minus B is a minus 5. That becomes 5 squared. Uh, a and C are 1 and 5 respectively, so it's 1 and 5, 2A is 2 times 1, all right? And after that, tidy up, all right? And this is what I mean by tidying up. 5 squared is 25, 4 times 5 is 20, all right? And 25 minus 20 is a 5. So you have tidied things up and uh, get the two solutions, the first one using the plus sign, the second one using the minus sign. So once... Uh, one of your solutions is minus 5 plus square root of 5 divided by 2. The other one, replace this plus by the minus, and you've got the other solution. So these are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. The third one, all right, we've got 10 and don't have, uh, don't have the time in the classroom to, to illustrate so many examples, but I do, all right? So I'm going to give you... Uh, example. If you come to my class, it's an example below. All right. So here again, uh, you know, bring this over. You have a plus x. Bring that over. You have a minus one. Minus x. When you draw over, it becomes a plus x. Plus one. When brought over, it becomes a minus one. All right. What do you do with this? You get the values of a, b, and c, and write them out. So a is a one, b is a one, and c is a minus one. All right. Pop out your quadratic formula and replace. All right, so uh, B is a 1, so that would be a minus 1. Uh, a and C are 1 and minus 1 respectively. So that's your A, that's your C, and your A is here. All right, and after that, what do you do? 
you tidy up. All right, you tidy up. So minus one stays minus one. Minus four times one times minus one is a four. So one square is a one. One plus four is a five. So that's what I mean by tidying up. Just be very careful and tidy up. And after tidying up, what do you do? You you get your solutions or your two solutions, one by using the plus sign. So it's minus one plus square root of five over two. The other one by using the minus sign. That's all to it, uh, uh, when you solve the quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Let's do another one. All right. So, you know, bring the minus 8x over and you get a plus 8x here. The minus one is from there. All right. Identify your a, b, and c. a is a 4, b is an 8, and c is a minus 1. Okay. And, you know, reproduce your quadratic formula, uh, the numbers in. All right. Don't put in the numbers straight away. Re write this out. All right. Be sure you write this out. And then after that, in the second step, replace it. In. So B is an 8. So uh, minus B is minus 8. You have an 8 squared here, 4. A is a 4. And C is a minus 1. 2A uh, is 2 times 4. After this, what happens? Tidy up. All right. So you have a 64 there. 4 times 4 is a 16. Plus, uh, minus and minus becomes a plus. So 64 plus 16 is an 80. All right, square root of 80. 80 is actually 16 times 5. 16 times 5. 16, when you square root 16, you get a, you get a 4. All right, and that's how I transform this, uh, uh, this third square root of 80 into 4 square root of 5. Because 80 is 16 times 5. When you square root 16, you get a 4 there. Minus 8. Divided by a, what, what you are, what you end up with is a one plus minus square root five over two. And your two solutions are there. One using the plus sign, so uh, 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 so it's a one. Um, it's a one. The minus one is there. All right, I forgot the minus one. So minus one uh, plus uh, square root five over two, and the other one is uh, minus one. Uh, minus square root 5 over 2. All right, let me just do a bit of a repair work over here. Let me get my stuff out, and this is the minus here. All right, and you have got it. Oh, you've got it. All right, so that's how you solve this quadratic equation. All right, a bit of a glitch there. All right, now another equation. All right, okay, just examples after examples, so you get it. All right, now you don't have to do any rearrangement here and you don't have to do any rearrangement here because it's already in standard form. All right, and what do you do when you get this? You get your values of A, B, and C. And here they are. A is 1, B is minus 13, and C is an 11. So you get your values of A, B, and C. Plot your uh, quadratic formula out and replace the values in. All right, so B is a minus 13. So this is a minus minus 13. It will become plus 13. All right, so this is a minus 13 squared times, uh, it's a 4, A is a 1, and B, C is a, an 11. So A here, 1. So replace A at the bottom and in the denominator with a 1 here. All right, and after this, again, tidy things up. All right, minus minus 13 is a plus 13. Plus minus, you have a 169. Minus 13 squared is a 169 minus 44. All right. Uh, and that you get 125. And 125 is 25 times 5. 25 times 5. So 25 times 5, when you square root 25, you get a 5 out here. All right, you get a 5 out there. And that's how uh, I transform this set from a, a square root of 125 to 5 square root 5. All right, because 125 is 25 times 5. When you bring the 25 out of the square root, you get a 5 here. All right, and your two solutions are 13 uh, plus 5 square root 5 over 2, and the other one use the minus uh, uh, sign. All right, so it's really, really, really incredibly simple. All right, so let's look at this one here. It's 4x squared equals to 4x, minus, uh, 4x plus 1. It's not in the standard form, so I'm going to express it in the standard form first. 4x squared minus 4x minus 1. And from here, you get your A, B, and C. 
A is a 4, B is a minus 4, and C is a minus 1. All right? Get your quadratic formula out, replace the values in there. So minus B is a minus 4 here. All right, B squared is a minus 4 squared. Uh, minus 4, A, replace it over there. C, replace that over there. And A, again, replace this over here. Just be systematic and don't panic. Don't be callous. Don't be panic. Uh, don't, don't panic, you know, and you should be okay. And after that, it's all a matter of clearing things up. Just like Marie Kondo, you know, like clearing up your house, clearing up the attic, clearing up your bookcase. This is clearing up the, the working. All right, so here is a, a, a minus, minus 4. You get a 4 here. Minus 4 squared, you get a, a 16. 4 times 4, you get a 16. Minus, minus, you get a plus here. Okay, so it's a 4 plus minus square root of 32. And 32 is 16 times 2. So when you bring the 16 out, you get a, you get a 4 square root 2. And when you do the division, you see that 4 divided by 8 is, a, a, you know, 8 becomes a 2, 4 becomes a 1, and the 4 here disappears. It becomes a 1. All right, you don't have to write that 1. All right, and your two solutions are obvious. 1 plus square root 2 over 2 and 1 minus square root 2 over 2. Simple. All right? Okay. I think we have three more of this. All right? I just want you to get the hang of this. Get the, the whole, you know, get the hang of how to solve this thing. All right? Now, this is not in standard form. Put it in standard form. So, you have a 13 here. Transfer it over and you get a minus 13. Transfer it. Make it standard. All right? And you get a minus 13 here. All right, and from the standard form, you're able to identify the values of A, which is 2, value of B, which is minus 7, and value of C, which is minus 13. Pop this out, all right, replace the values, all right, and you get a minus 7 here. Uh, B, B is a minus 7, A is a 2, you replace it here and here. C is a minus 13, and you get it here. All right, and do clearing up work, tidying things up, all right, be very careful, tidy things up. So minus, minus 7 is a 7, plus, minus, just write it down. Minus 7 squared is a 49. 4 times 2 times 13 is 104. All right, 104. And, um, and, 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 and um, uh, uh, 2 times 2 is a 4 in the denominator. So that's 153. All right, 49 plus uh, 104 is 153. And 153 is 9 times 17. All right, 153 is 9 times 17. So square root of 9 is a 3, and you bring that 3 out. And the square root of 17 is remains there. All right, it's stuck, all right, because you cannot square root 17. It's kind of like stuck uh, in, the, in the land, you know. The gene can come out. So anyway, uh, for the solutions, the two solutions, first of all, you get a 7 plus... Use the plus sign, 3 square root 17 over 4. For the other solution, use the minus sign. Always, the first solution use the plus sign, the second solution use the minus sign. You know, standard, 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 standard. Get the hang of things, you will never get this wrong. All right, this is already in standard form, so let's just reproduce the thing and get the values of A, B, and C. A is 4, B is minus 3, and C is minus 5. You know, you have to be very careful here because if you get this wrong, then everything else is going to fall like a, like a, like a you know, bunch of dominoes. So you've got to get this right. A equals to 4, B is minus 3, and C is minus 5. You know, get your quadratic formula out and replace the numbers. So B is a minus 3, uh, B is a minus 3 again, A and C are 4 and minus 5. And after this, do your clearing up. Do your tidying up. And this is it. Minus 3 squared is a 9. <coughs> minus minus 3 is a 3. 4 times 4 is a 16. 16 times 5 is an 80. So 9 plus 80 is 89. All right, so these are your two solutions already incorporated into one. The first solution uses your plus sign. So it's 3 plus square root 89 over 8. And the second one uses your negative sign here, your minus sign. So it's 3 minus square root of 89 over 8. Standard. All right, just be very careful. All right, you cannot get this wrong. 
All right, so again, this is already in standard form. So get your A, B, and C values. A is a 1, B is a 6, and C is a minus 5. All right, identify this properly. If not, all the rest is going to be wrong. So once you've got this out, uh, write down your quadratic formula and replace the values. And after you have replaced the values, remember, it's all a matter of tidying up. So B is a 6, you see the 6 there, the 6 there, A is a 1, you see the 1 here and the 1 here, and C is a minus 5, you see the minus 5 there. Tidy things up. And 6 squared is a 36, 4 minus 5 is a 20, so it's 36 plus 20, which gives you 56. 56 is uh, 4 times 14, all right, 4 times 14 is 56. So you bring the 4 out and that becomes a 2. All right, and here you already have your two solutions, you know, wrapped up into one. So your first solution is minus 6 divided by 2 is a minus 3. All right, minus 6 divided by 2 is a minus 3. And you use your plus sign, 2, two and 2 cancels out. So it's a plus square root 14. The other solution is, again, minus 6 divided by 2 is a minus 3, and use the minus sign here. 2 divided by 2 is a 1, so it's just a minus square root of 14. All right, to save some space here, I just present the solution immediately. All right, so you have this one, which is already in standard form. Solve this using the quadratic formula, and uh, that's it. All right, and get the A, B, and C. It's already in standard form. There's no need to shift anything. There's no need to shuffle anything. There's no need to swap sides and all that kind of stuff. It's already in standard form. Your A value, your B value is 3, and your C value is minus 9, and there you have it. Your quadratic formula comes out, and you replace your values. You, you, you know, this is getting things prepared, you know, if you go over here, all right, you're going to fumble a lot here if you don't have this prepared. So my, 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 my advice to you is to get this explicitly stated. Many students try to replace the values here without having explicitly written A equals to 1, B equals to 3, and C equals to minus 9. Somehow writing this out is beneath them, all right, it's beneath no one. Write out what your value of A is, what your value of B is, and what your value of C is. Write them out explicitly. And, and why? So that you don't make any errors. So here you have a minus 3, your B is a 3. This is a 3 squared. Uh, 1 and minus 9 comes right here. Alright, and after that, tidy things up. 3 squared is a... 9, 4 times 9 is a 36, 9 plus 36 is a 45, right? 9, bring it out of the square root, is a 3, square root 5 over 2. And you have your two solutions folded up here. If you want your two solutions explicitly, it's minus 3 plus 3 square root 5. Use the plus over 2. The other solution uses the minus, so minus 3 minus 3 square root 5 over 2. And that's it. Very easy. Now I want to show you one secret. All right, super secret that you must know, and this is calculator's quadratic formula calculator. Remember, don't use this unless you are checking, okay? But I love to give this secrets, all right? So I'm going to show you this one here. I'm going to show you this question here, 1, 3, and minus 9. So I'm going to show you here, I'm going to come over here and say 1, 1. This is 3, and this is minus 9. And I'm going to press enter here. I'm just going to press calculate. And it goes ahead and it, it calculates. And you can see that it's minus 3 over 2 plus minus 3 square root 5 over 2, which is hopefully what I got. And indeed, it is what I got. Minus uh, 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 square root 5 minus 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 square root 5, which is exactly what you see over here. Exactly. They look slightly different, but believe me, they are exactly the same. Okay? So, uh, with this, I've shown you how to use the quadratic formula to solve the quadratic equation. What's the quadratic formula? This is the 
quadratic formula. This one here. This is the quadratic formula. What did I use it to do? I use it to solve the quadratic equation here. So use the quadratic formula to solve the quadratic equation. Now you know, um, and I showed you also this calculator soups quadratic formula calculator. You know, you don't need this URL. Just go on to Google and and, and search for calculator soup quadratic formula calculator and this URL will pop out as the first one. So you don't have to get anything down. All right. Now, uh, what's this one here? Okay, let's go on to the next. Uh, let's go oh here. Uh, uh, wait for the quote. I hope this this is okay. I don't know what happened to my PowerPoint. Okay, but but uh, let me let me try to restart this. Okay. Something seems to have happened to my PowerPoint. Now, <clears throat> um, okay, uh, let me go to um, where I was. Apologies for this. Uh, something in the something happened to the computer. Okay, so what I've done is so far is you know three weeks ago I've taught you how to solve using the method of graphing. Two weeks ago, I've shown you how to solve quadratic equations using the method of factorization. Last week, I, so, I showed you how to solve uh, quadratic equations using completing the square. And just, I don't know, 20 minutes, you know, the last 20 minutes, we've been going through how to solve quadratic, quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Now, we go on to the second part of this session. All right, and I'm going to show you some word problems. All right, so we are done with the solving quadratic equations. I'm going to show you how quadratic equations come alive. How quadratic equations are applied. All right, instead of just solving the thing which we have been doing, I'm going to show you some word problems. All right, and the first word problem is very, very simple. The product of two consecutive odd integers is 99. Find the integers. So in this section, we're going to go to word problems. And you can see this is lots of words, no equations here. You've got to form the equations from the words, from the sentences here. So it says the product of two consecutive odd integers is 99, find the integers. So you know that you've got integers. Integers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are integers. And you've got, you know that it's not just integers, you've got two two integers, and they are all integers, and they are consecutive integers, and you have to find the integers. So here, the, the simplest thing is to assign x to be the first odd integer. So x is your first odd integer, the first one, all right? And if x is the first odd integer, then x plus 2 will be your second odd integer. And why do you know it's second plus, the x plus 2? Because it's consecutive. You have been told it's consecutive odd integers. And so if x is the first odd integer, x plus 2 has to be the second odd integer because they are consecutive. All right. Now, further, you know that the product of these two consecutive odd integers is 99. And so here it's x times x plus 2 is 99. Simple. All right. And of course, expand this x times x is x squared. 2 times x, x times 2 is 2x equals to 99 and this is not in the standard form so you know rearrange it so that it's in the standard form rearrange the thing right so that it becomes the standard form all right and after that you know use method of factorization you know we've gone through four methods why use the method of factorization couldn't we have used graphical method couldn't we have completed the square couldn't we have you know you, you, you done something else all right now we are using method of factorization because You've been told that it's two consecutive integers. And if it's integers you're dealing with, you definitely can factorize. You're able to factorize this, all right? So, you know, use the method of factorization. Why? Because you've been told in the question that it's integers that are involved. You're looking for two integers. You're not looking for two, you know, kind of complicated numbers. You're looking for two nice integers. All right, so here, you know, you factorize it, and when you factorize it, you see that it's x plus 11 times x minus 9. And here you uh, uh, use the zero product property, and you get x equals to minus 11 and x equals to 9 using your zero product property. So set 1 is, you know, you know the first thing that you've got to note is this. Minus 11 and 9 are not consecutive odd integers. They are odd integers, but they are not consecutive. They are far from consecutive. Minus 11 and 9 are far from each other. 
All right, so what you want are two consecutive odd integers. So set one is nine. So if x is nine, then x plus two has to be 11. So x is nine, x plus two, which is the other integer is 11. No, you know, you, at this step you've got x, but there is the other number which is x plus two. So if x is nine here, x is nine, then your x plus two must be 11. So this is your first set. And your second set, we don't forget this one here because integers can be positive integers, integers can be negative integers. So you have another one, if x is minus 11 here, then x plus two minus 11 plus two has to be a minus nine. All right, so you have two sets. Set one is nine and 11 and set two is minus nine and minus 11. And here you, 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 know, you, you must do the final step, check your answers. So check set one, set one is my, uh, 9 and 11. So let's check whether it multiplies out to 11. And yes, 9 times 11 is 99. So it checks out, it checks out with a question. All right, what the question requires. And set two, minus 9 times minus 11 is also 99. Again, it checks out. You know, Checking this out at the end of the question is kind of like before going to bed, making sure all the doors are locked so that no one you know, can break into your house. Same, before you leave the question, before you go and attempt the second question or whatever it is, before you attempt the next question, always check. Check that the doors are locked before you sleep. All right? Check that you know, your answers you know, kind of tally with what the question wants. And yes, in this case, it does. So I'm happy I solved the question. So let's look at the second word question, all right? Now, find two consecutive positive integers, and it doesn't say whether it's, a, you know, whether it's 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 a, 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 a or, or even or anything, just two consecutive positive integers, such that the square of the first decreased by 17. Hmm, the square of the first decreased by 17 equals to four times the second. So here they are consecutive positive integers. So x is the first positive integer and x plus 1 then becomes the second positive integer. Why x plus 1? Because it's consecutive positive integers. Positive. All right? Integers. So x and x plus 1. So very simple. The square of the first and the first is x. Remember, we have said that the first positive integer is x. So the square of the first decreased by 17. That's what you have here. The square of the first decreased by 17 equals to four times the second. The second one is x plus one. So it equals to four times the second one. Again, you know, at this point, do some housekeeping. What you need here is a little bit of housekeeping and you, you get four times x and, you know, four times one is a four. So multiply it out, all right? and and and. This is not housekeeping enough. There's, there's quite a bit of mess here. And so what you do is bring this 4x over and that becomes minus 4x. Minus 17, and when you bring that over, that becomes a minus 4. Minus 17 minus 4 is a minus 21. And that's what I mean by housekeeping, bringing it into the standard form. And you know the next steps. Identify A, B, and C, all right, and factorize it. All right, so you have uh, x minus 7 and x plus 3 are the two factors. And uh, once you have that as the two factors, you can use the, you know, uh, zero product property, x equals to seven, x equals to minus three. And you immediately, you know, you immediately get rid of this. Why do you get rid of this? Because you want two consecutive positive integers. That's not a positive integer. So minus three is not a positive integer. So, you know, cancel that out immediately. You know, use a different colored, you know, a, a, a pen and go cancel that out. All right, and state why you cancel it. You cancel it because we want positive integers. We, and, and minus three is a negative integer. It's, a, it's an integer that is a negative integer. So here we are left with seven. And remember that x is seven. And we have a second, you know, we have a second number. Remember that we have a second number. The second number is x plus one. So x is seven, x plus one uh, is an eight. All right, so we have our solution x and uh, x equals to seven and uh, the two consecutive positive integers are seven and eight. All right, and again, as I've stated, before you sleep, make sure your, 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 the main doors to your house, you know, your apartment, they're all locked. All right, so let's, let's 
check it out. All right, so the square of the first decrease by 17 is the square of the first number. 7 is your first number, remember that, all right? We have set x to be the first number. So square of, seven, uh, square of the first number is 7 squared. Minus 17 is 49, minus 17 is 32. And we are going to check whether that's equal to 4 times the second. So 4 times the second, the second number is 8. So 4 times 8 is 32. Are they equal? Yes, they are. So we are okay. Our doors are locked. We can sleep safely. We can sleep soundly. All right. So that's how you attack word problems. Analyze them, you know, slow and steady. Be sure of, you know, whether you're dealing with odd, odd integers, even integers, positive numbers, negative numbers. Be very clear in your mind. Right now, let's go on to a third one. A dining room is three feet longer than it is wide. Hmm. So it's not square; it's rectangular. All right, square. The, the you know the length and the width are the same. So here it's it's not the same. So it's a rectangle. This rectangular dining room three feet longer than it is wide and has an area of 154 square feet. Find the dimensions of this room. And so here, you know, the first thing you got to work out is this. X is the width of the room in feet. And if X is the width of the room in feet, then X plus 3 is the length of the room because you are told that the length is, it, it is 3 feet longer than it is wide. So the length is X plus 3. 3 feet longer than it is wide. So here you know that the second thing that you know that is an area of 154 and that is expressed like that. The width times the length. The width is x. The length is x plus 3. That equals to 154 square feet. All right. And again, bring in your vacuum cleaner, you know, to do the housekeeping. That's your housekeeping. The first part. So, you, you know, uh, 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 multiply this out. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. And that 154 space there. That's not in our housekeeping. It's not in the standard form yet. So bring that 154 over to become a minus 154. There you have it. And factor the thing. All right. And so you have x minus 11, x plus 14. And after that, you can have the, you know, you apply the zero product property to get x equals to 11 and x equals to minus 14. Now you are, you are, you are asked to find the dimensions of this room. All right. So dimensions cannot be negative. All right, dimensions cannot be negative. You cannot say uh, uh, the length of a room is minus 14 feet. What's that? Right, so the dimensions cannot be negative, and therefore you strike this out, strike this out because dimensions cannot be negative. All right, and when you strike that out, write down the reason here. Tell your teacher, tell the person that's marking your script why you are striking that out. You are striking that out because dimensions of a room cannot be negative. So here your room dimensions are 11. And remember 11 is your x, x equals to 11. But that's your width. So what's your length? Your length is x plus 3. That's 11 plus 3. 11 plus 3 is 14. So your room dimensions are 11 feet times 14 feet. And again, before you, you, you sleep, before you leave this question, before you feel satisfied with the question, test it out, check. So here you are told that you're, you know, you've arrived at this uh, um, um, dimensions, multiply it out. So room area 11 times 40 is indeed 154 square feet, which checks out with whatever your question requires. All right? Well done. Right? So we go to you know, single story. It doesn't have an upstairs. And... Um, it says my internet connection is unstable again. Next week, I'll, I'll, I'll look for a, a, a new place. Okay. Now, the floor of a single-story building is 14 feet longer than it's wide. Kind of the same type of question. The building has 1,632 square feet of floor space. Find the dimensions of the building. And you know it already. All right. Make the width uh, x and make the length x plus 14. Why x plus 14? Because the length is 14 feet longer than its width. So x is the width, x plus 14 is the length of the room. All right, and, and, and you know you know that your, the building has a six, 1,632 square feet, so that has to come from x times x plus 14. All right, do the clearing up, all right, multiply this out, 
x squared plus 14x equals to 1,632. Bring that 1,632 over, all right, and factorize it. And when you factorize it, you see x plus 48, x minus 34. These are the two factors of this quadratic equation, all right, and you can apply the zero product property, all right? So x plus 48 gives you a value of x equals to minus 48. And you know you have to cancel that out. You know you have to cancel that out because dimensions cannot be negative. But before we do that, let's do the other side. X minus 34 equals to zero. So X equals to 34, all right? So here, uh, cancel that out. And again, you know, don't cancel that. Don't do things like that without a reason. So make sure you state the reason that you are canceling that out because dimensions cannot be negative. All right, the dimensions of building has to be positive, and that's why you have a big, you know, red cross there. All right, so x is 34, and remember this x is the width. Your, 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 your length is 14 feet longer than its width, so it's 34 plus 14, and 34 plus 14 is 48. So that, these are your room dimensions. Okay, and when you multiply 34 and 48, check. Remember, multiply out 34 and 48, do it with your calculator, you indeed get 1,632 square feet, okay? Now, um, find two consecutive integers whose squares have a sum of 85. So you want to have two consecutive integers, there's no qualification whether it's or even nothing. Two consecutive integers whose squares have a sum of 85. So a, x is the first integer and x plus one is the second integer. Why do you say x plus one is the second integer? Because of the word consecutive here. They are consecutive integers. So x, x plus one, consecutive integers, all right? So, uh, you know, the square of these consecutive integers have a sum of 85. And that's, that's what it looks like when you translate this into a mathematical equation. The square of x plus, the square of x plus one is 85. And you know this, multiply this out, and when you multiply this out, you get x squared plus 2x plus 1. This comes from a multi your, your, your spring cleaning, all right? x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 2x comes down here. 1 minus 85 is minus 84. All right, and you know, divide throughout by 2. And you see, you know, they all can be divided by 2. It, it, it's begging to be divided, all right? It's begging you to divide it. Divide me, divide me, divide me. So, so divide it by 2, 2x two squared divided by 2 is x squared, 2x divided by 2 is x, Eight minus 84 divided by 2 is minus 42. You're looking for integers, so you can factorize this thing. And that comes out to x plus 7, x minus 6. Apply the zero product property, and when you apply the zero product property, you get, uh, you get an x equals to minus 7, uh, and x equals to 6. These are your two solutions, these are your two x values. All right, remember you have two consecutive integers. You have your x, uh, and so you have your set one. Your x is six, your x plus one might, must be seven. And set two, if your x is minus seven, your x plus one must be minus six. All right, remember you cannot cancel the minus seven here because we are not talking about dimensions. There are no, no, no talk about dimensions, all right? There's no right, you have no right to cancel the minus seven out. No right at all. All right, because you're not talking about dimensions or, or time or something like that, all right? So next, uh, you really test this out. So set one, six plus seven, you know, the, the two consecutive integers whose squares have a sum of 85, six squared plus seven squared equals to 36. Six squared, you get a 36. Seven squared, you get a 49. When you add these up, you get an 85. So this set qualifies. It's, you know, there are solutions to this question, but we have a set two to test. So here you have a minus six squared plus minus seven squared. Again, minus six squared is 36, minus seven squared is 49. Again, you get an 85. So both sets are solutions. You have two sets of solutions in this case. All right, set one is okay, it's good to go. Set two is also good to go. Okay, find two consecutive odd numbers, all right? whose squares, now you have two consecutive odd numbers, odd, 
all right, whose squares are the sum 290. So x is the first odd number, x plus 2 is the second odd number, and you, you, know, you translate this into a mathematical equation. So x squared plus x plus 2 squared, all right, and the consecutive, remember, these are not two consecutive integers, these are two consecutive odd numbers, and that's why the second one is the x plus 2, all right? Now multiply this bit out x plus 2 squared and you get an x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right, and do this tidying up. x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 4x, just bring it down. 4 minus 290. When you bring this over, it's minus 290. You get minus 286. And again, you know, look at this. You know, it's begging to be divided. All right, this, this video is begging to be divided by 2. So divide by 2 throughout. Divide by 2 across. So 2 divide, 2x two divided by 2x squared divided by 2 is an x squared. Plus 4 divided by 2 is a 2. Minus 286 divided by 2 is a minus 143. 0 divided by 2 is a 0. This has to be divided by 2, 2. Every number there has to be divided by 2. Factorize the thing and you get x plus 13 and x minus 11. Apply your zero product rule and you get one of the solutions as x minus equals to minus 13. The other solution as x equals to 11. And we, these are your x values. Remember, you have two values, x and x plus 2. So if your x value is 11, your x plus 2 is a 13. This is your first set, all right? Your second set, if your x is minus 13, your x plus 2 is a minus 11. So, you know, when we test out, we have to test out both the sets. So when we test out uh, set 1, 11 squared plus 13 squared is 121. 11 squared is 121. 13 squared is 169. When you add both of this up, indeed, you get 290. So this set passes. It passes the test. Now we have a second set and we have to again, you know, uh, uh, do it, put, put it to the same test. Minus 13 squared plus minus 11 squared. And that gives you 169. Minus 13 squared is 169. Minus 11 squared is 121. And that too gives you, when you add up both of them, that too gives you 290. So set one, you have a set of answers here and you have a second set of answers here. Two sets of answers. All right? Both are okay. Now this is a little bit different. The sum of a number and its reciprocal is 17 over 4. Let's think of this. The sum of a number, the number plus its reciprocal. Sum means plus. Sum means plus. So the number plus its reciprocal is 17 over 4 and you have to find that number. Right? So x is the number and 1 over x is the reciprocal of the number. All right? Every time you think of reciprocal, you think of topsy-turvy. All right, think of topsy-turvy. All right, so x is the number, 1 over x is the reciprocal of that number. And we are told that the sum, sum of the number and its reciprocal, that means add both of them up, you get a 17 over 4. All right, so x plus 1 over x equals to 17 over 4. All right, and, you know, I, I've used the, you know, kind of a, metaphor if you like right or, or a piece of chicken stuck in your between your teeth you know you go and have kfc you know and, and, and you're enjoying the chicken and a piece of chicken gets stuck in your teeth and, and you find it really irritating you have to take a toothpick and get that piece of chicken out right same you have a piece of chicken here stuck somewhere and the piece of chicken is the one over x it's damn irritating it's so super irritating it's a piece of chicken in between your teeth and you have to get that one over x settled some way you go to you know put an end to this one over x and the way you do it is to multiply throughout by x so multiply throughout multiply each of these terms by x and you get an x squared when you multiply one over x by x you get a one and when you multiply 17 over four by x, you get 17 over 4x. And you have another piece of chicken in your, in your, between your teeth, you know, a smaller piece of chicken. And that's, that smaller piece of chicken is the over 4, which is like super irritating, right? So you multiply throughout this time to get rid of the divided by 4, to get rid of the denominator here, the divided by 4, multiply throughout by 
uh, by 4. Uh, okay, bring it across first. When you bring it across, you get a minus 17 uh, over 4x and multiply throughout by 4. All right, so when you multiply throughout by 4, remember why you are multiplying throughout by 4, to get this piece of chicken out of your, uh, out of between your teeth. All right, so x squared multiplied by 4 is 4x squared. Minus 17 over 4 times 4 is minus 17x. And 1 times 4 is 4. All right, and now it's beginning to look good. Right, it's beginning to look good. So factorize that thing, and when you factorize it, you get 4x minus 1 and x minus 4. Okay, and apply the zero product property, and you get 4x minus 1 equals to 0, and x equals to 1 quarter. All right, and the other one is x equals to 4. Very simple. x minus 4 equals to 0, so x equals to 4. So here you have 4. Your number is 4. So 4 plus the reciprocal of 4 equals to 4 and a quarter. 4 plus a quarter is 4 and a quarter. And when you, when you, when you, you know, uh, uh, transform this number, indeed you get 17 over 4. So you've solved it. So what is the number? The number is 4. All right. Uh, the number could be mine, uh, 1 over 4 too. So these two are the solutions to this particular question. Very simple. Now, there are three consecutive positive integers such that the sum of the square of the first and the product of the other two is 154. Let's, let's read this carefully. There are three consecutive positive integers. So far, we've, dealing, we've been dealing with two. All right, this is slightly different because there are three consecutive positive integers. One followed by another, followed by another such as the sum of the square of the first and the product of the other two is 154. Find the integers. So let's, let x be the first integer. And because there are three positive, uh, consecutive positive integers, let x plus 1 be the second integer, and let x plus 2 be the third integer. This is very important. Settle this first. All right, and once you have it, you can now formulate your equation, your mathematical equation. So this, uh, the sum of the square of the first, so this is the, the square of the first integer, and the product of the other two, this is the product of the other two. And this is the sum, you add them all up, equals to 54. Right, so let's, let's do what we have to do. Uh, when we expand this out, we get x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals to 154. So this bit here is a, is a result of the uh, expanding this bit out here. All right, so expand this and you will get this. Now x squared plus x squared is 2x squared. 3x, just bring that down and bring them 154 over and you get minus 152. 2 minus 154 is minus 152. All right, and factorize the thing. And when you factorize it, you see that you have two factors, 2x plus 19 and x minus 8. All right, x minus 8. And, you know, apply the zero product property and uh, you get these two solutions. All right, uh, x equals to minus 19 over 2 and x equals to 8. Now we want integers and this is not an integer. 19 over 2. Minus 19 over 2 is not an integer. This is an integer. All right? So here, check it out. It says the square of the first. This is the first integer. Remember, you know, remember here, the x is the first integer. x plus 1 is the second integer. x plus 2 is the third integer. You are required to find all three integers, all three consecutive integers. So uh, remember that x equals to 8 is only the first integer. So, following this, square of the first, 8 squared, and the product of the other two, 9 and 10. So, that becomes 8 squared is 64, 9 times 10 is 90. So, 64 plus 90 is indeed 154. And, you know, we have checked, we have checked our solution with that. Our three integers, the three integers we are looking for are 8, 9, and 10. All right, eight, nine, and 10. Very simple. The sum of two numbers is 60 and their product is 576. We are told that there are two numbers. 
right? And we are not told that they are consecutive. No mention that they are consecutive. All right, we have to be very careful here. We've been doing, you know, so many consecutive odd numbers, consecutive even numbers, consecutive integers that we are going to be loud into thinking that they are consecutive numbers. We have not been told that they are consecutive. We cannot assume that they are consecutive. They are probably not consecutive. So x is the first number and the second number is 60 minus x. How do we know 60 minus x equals is the second number? Because we know that the two numbers, when we total up the two numbers, they give us 60. All right? When we add the two numbers up, they will give us 60. So x is the first number and 60 minus x has to be the second number. This is very crucial, absolutely crucial. All right. If you assume them to be consecutive, you've got it wrong. All right. So you cannot assume them to be negative. X is the first number and therefore 60 minus X is the second number. We get this as the second number because of this statement here. The sum of two numbers is 60. And your product is 576. So here, the product is 576. This is the first number. That's the second number. The product is a 576. Uh, tidy things up. It's very messy. It's very messy. It's shouting out to you, tidy me up. All right, so x times 60 is 60x, and there you have a minus x squared equals to 576. Do your thing. All right, zero. All right, because this is a minus x, very messy. All right, so bring that over, that becomes x squared. Bring that over, that becomes a minus 60x, and that stays 576. Uh, factor that out. And again, use the zero product property. X minus 48 is zero, X equals to 48. X minus 12 equals to X equals to 12. So these are your two solutions. All right, and check their product is, do they total up to be 60, 48 and 12? Do they total up to be 60? Yes, they do. 48 plus 12 is 60. And when you multiply them out, Get your calculator, tick, 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 get your calculator out. When you multiply 12 times 48, you indeed get 576. So you have done your checking. You have locked all the doors before you go to bed. All right, you have ensured that all the doors are locked. You've got the right solution. Okay, second one, divide 29, uh, uh, another question. Divide 29 into two parts so that the sum of their squares is 45. Now, again, you have to, Take 29, this number 29, and divide it into two parts. The two parts could be 4 and 25. 4 plus 25 equals to 29. All right, so 4 and 25 could be the two parts. It could be 20 and 9, because 20 and 9 add up to 29. All right, in any case, you have to divide 29 into two parts. One number plus another number that total up to 29, so that their sum of squares is 425. So x is the first part, 29 minus x is the second part. Remember, you cannot assume that they are consecutive. You cannot, you have not been told that they're consecutive. You cannot add that into the question. You have no right to add the word consecutive to this question. All right, you have to be faithful to the question. And the question says divide 22 into two parts that may or may not be consecutive. All right, so x is the first part, 29 minus x is the second part. and uh, the sum of their squares is 425. So when you sum of the squares is x squared plus 29 minus x squared equals 425. All right, tidy it up. You know, expand this, and when you expand this, you get uh, you get x squared plus 841 minus 58 plus x squared. This bit here, this this three terms here comes from expanding this out. All right, and once you have expanded this out, you know, x squared plus x squared is the 2x squared. Minus 58 is minus 58. 841 minus 425 is 416. And you know, when you see this, you know, this is a, everything, you know, can be divided by two nicely. So divided by two, right? You know, find all sorts of ways to simplify this before you factorize. So divide by two, you get x squared. 58 uh, minus 58 divided by two, you get a minus 29. 416 divided by two, you get a 208. And then after that, factorize and apply the zero product property. All right, so x equals to 16 and x equals to 13 are our uh, solutions. So we have, to, we have to see whether it, uh, it works out, all right? 
divide 29 into two parts. So they must total up to 29. 16 plus 13 is 16 plus 13, 29. 16 plus 13 is indeed 29. So we have divided 29 into two parts. That part is done. Now the sum of their squares is it for 425. So we have to, uh, 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 I'm here. Sum of squares, sorry, sum of squares, all right? It's a sum of squares, uh, uh, is, is a sum of squares, uh, 425. So 16 square plus 13 square. So this is a sum of the squares is 256. 16 square is 256. 13 square is 169. And when you add this up, you indeed, you get 425. So you have checked this bit of the question too. All right, so your two solutions, your two parts. What are your two parts? 16 and 13. These are your two parts. All right, they add up to 29 and the sum of their squares is 425. Okay, all right, this is a slightly different question. Again, it's a slightly different question. It's a two digit number. So 12 is a two digit number, 49 is a two digit number. 91 is a two digit number, a two digit number like 12, like 41, like 95, like 76. A two digit number is such that the product of its digits is 12. When 36 is added to this number, the digits are interchanged. Find this number, find this two digit number. Right, so let's read this again because it's a little, you know, tricky here. A two-digit number, and think of two-digit numbers, 41, 36, 47, 72, 81. These are all two-digit numbers. But this is a special two-digit number. The product of its digits is 12. When 36 is added to the number, the digits are interchanged. We have to find this two-digit number. So let XY be the two-digit number. So XY is the two-digit number. So here we are told that the product of its digits is 12. So X times Y is 12. So it can be 41, for example. So X is 4, Y is 1. In any case, we are told that the product of its digits is 12. So X plus X times Y is 12. And we are told that when 36 is added to this number, the digits are interchanged. So when you add 36 to this number xy, now this number xy is actually 10x because this x is in the position of the tens and y is in the position of ones, all right? x is in the position of tens, y is in the position of one. So here really when you add 36 to this number, you're already adding 36 to 10x plus y, all right? And when you add 36 to the number, the digits are interchanged. That means it becomes yx. And now y occupies the position of tens and x occupies the position of ones. So it becomes, when you add 36, it becomes 10y plus x because the digits are interchanged. So here you have two equations, all right? And you know, I want to tell you the general method of doing this. The general method of doing this is to get an expression of y so that you can replace this y here. So I'm going to get an expression of y from here, y equals to 12 over x. And why am I getting an expression of y? I'm getting an expression of y so that I can replace this y here. I can eliminate the y. I can get rid of y. All right. I can banish y from this particular equation. And that's what happens. x, y equals to 12 y equals to 12 over x. And, you know, remember this. I'm going to take this 12 over x and put it over here, and I'm going to take the 12 over x and put it over here. So this is going to come here. This is going to go there. So that's what happens, right? You see 36 plus 10x plus y, and y is 12 over x. 10y, and that's 10, 12 over x. And of course, this is begging to be, you know, made tidy, all right? So let's tidy this up, all right? Um, 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 36 plus 10x, 10x, you bring this over. When you bring this over, it becomes the minus x, so that, that, that becomes 9x. 10x minus x over here becomes a 9x. 12x is here, and this is 10 times 12, so it's 120 over x, all right? And, you know, this is so irritating. What's irritating about this is your 
divided by x. This bit here is irritating. It's the piece of chicken lodged between your teeth. So to get rid of this divided by x, multiply throughout by x. Multiply every term by x. That's how you get rid of the x at the bottom. And why do you want to get rid of x at the bottom? Because it's irritating you. All right, it's really irritating. It, 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 it's coming in the way of you solving this. So multiply everything by x and you get 36x, you get 9x squared, you get a 12 here equals to 120. All right, you know, rearrange this, do your spring cleaning, all right, tidy things up and you get, you, you bring this 120 over to become minus 120, you get a minus 108. And, you know, this is, 36 is 4 times 9 and this is, this is 12 times 9. All right, so here you bring out the 9 and you divide by 9, you get, uh, you get a x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals to 0. You get just this. Divide the left side by 9, divide the right side by 9, you are left with x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals to 0. That's what you have. Now you can factorize it and you can apply now the uh, zero product property to get x equals to minus six and x equals to two. Okay? And you know, this is not it. You have to get your y, right? And your y just now is 12 over x. So you got your x already, x equals to two. Your y is 12 divided by x. And your y is therefore 12 divided by the the two is here, just put a two over there. So it's six. So your two digit number is XY. Remember your two digit is XY. It must be 26. How did I get 26? Because in the beginning of this question, I said that the two digit number is XY. So your X is two, your Y is six. So your, the number you are after is 26, All right? But uh, remember that uh, when 36 is added to this number, you have to do the checks. When 36 is added to this number, the digits are interchanged. So 26 plus 36 is 62, which is inter the numbers interchange for 26. All right, 26, when you interchange the numbers, you get a 62. So your answer is correct. The number you are looking for, the two digit number you are looking for is 26. The product of its digits is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. When 36 is added to this number, when you add 36 to this 26, this number 26, the digits are interchanged. You have found your number. Okay, <clears throat> a two-digit number is four times the sum of its digits and twice the product of its digits. Find the number. Again, tricky, super tricky, very, very, very tricky. It's a two digit number. Again, it can be a 41, it can be a 97, it can be a 76, it can be a, you know, 29. It's a two digit number. It's four times the sum of its digits and twice the product of its digits. Find the number. So let XY be the two digit number again. So XY is the two digit number. And uh, so here we look at this, the two digit number is four times the sum of its digits. So this is the two digit number, 10x plus y. Remember 10x because x is in the tens position and y is in the ones position. So really when you write 10x, what you mean is 10x, when you write xy, what you mean is 10x plus y. That's the value of this number, all right? And it's four times, the sum of its digits, the sum of its digits is x plus y, so it's four times that. And it's twice the product of the digits, so 10x plus y is twice the product of its digits. This is the product of its digits, all right? So find the number, find x, y. So here, you know, we've got, we've got this, right? 10x plus y equals to 4x, 4x plus y. Now, 10x plus y equals to 2 times x, y. Now, this both must be the same because they are both equals to 10x plus y. This and this must be the same. 4x plus y must be the same as 2 times xy. Why? Because they equal to the same thing. And that's what I do in the next step. 4x plus y equals to 2xy. That's how I get this, all right? By reasoning that they must be equal. It must be, all right? So that's it. Now again, uh, 
clear things up. And the first thing I do is I divide throughout by two. I'm dividing throughout by two because four can be divided by two, two can be divided by two. So when two is divided by two, it disappears. When four is divided by two, that becomes a two here. All right, so I expand this. When I expand this, I get a two X plus two Y equals to X Y. I isolate the Y. What am I doing here? I'm isolating the Y. Why am I isolating the Y? I'm isolating the Y because I want an expression for Y that I can replace later. So I'm bringing the Y to one side and I'm factoring out Y. So how did I get this? This Y has a term, you know, it has a Y term here, it has a Y term here. I'm bringing this over and that becomes a minus two Y. I isolate Y and that's a X minus two here. And I have my expression for Y. Y equals to two X divided by X over two. This is precious. This is absolutely precious. This is absolutely necessary. All right. So here y equals to 2x over x minus 2. This is precious. Keep this in your mind. Now, after that, I have this particular expression, which I got earlier, and I'm going to replace the y with this. So 10x plus y, the y comes over here. 2 times x, y, 2 times x times y comes over here. And again, um, I do some housekeeping. 2 times x times 2 times x is 4x squared. All right? I bring this over. So when I bring this over, it's a minus 2x over x over 2. Bring this whole thing over. And once I bring this over, I simplify this. 4x squared minus 2x over x plus 2. I simplify it. So I have got this x. Now, 10x equals to this whole thing. 10x, skip this, 10x equals to this whole thing, which is this. All right, and now I can cross multiply. 10x times x, x minus 2 equals to 4x squared minus 2x. Uh, I, I multiply this out 10x squared. Uh, 10x times minus 2 is minus 20x. All right, and I bring it all to one side. 10x squared minus 4x squared is 6x squared minus 20x plus 2x is minus 18x. I factor out 6x and I get 6x, x minus 3. Uh, I get two solutions, x equals to 0 and x equals to 3. All right? And I'm going for x equals to 3. This x equals to 0 is known as my a trivial solution. The trivial solution. Okay, so I'm going for x equals to 3. All right? And x equals to 3, I have my x equals to 3 now. I have to find my y. Remember, the two-digit number is x, y. That's my two-digit number. That's what I'm after, my two-digit number. Now, x is 3. Y, I have to calculate from my magical formula. Remember, I asked you to keep this in mind just now. So here, I replace 3 in. I get y equals to 6. And so the number I'm looking for is x, y. It is 3, 6, 36. And I've got to check this, huh? all right? Uh, a two-digit number is uh, four times the sum of its digits. So the two-digit number is 36, right? So four times the sum of its digit is four times three plus six. This is the sum of its digit. So four times three plus six is four times nine is 36. Wonderful and twice the product of its digits. So two times three times six, three times six is the product of its digits is 36. I have got it. Wonderful. I've got my answer. The two digit number is three, six, 36. All right. Now, I think this is the last one. I think so. There might be one more after this. So bear with me. The denominator of a fraction is five more than its numerator. Gosh, what's this? The denominator. Denominator is the downstairs. The downstairs of a fraction is five more than the upstairs. The numerator is the upstairs. The denominator is the downstairs. All right. So sum of the fraction and its reciprocal is 3, 1 over 24. Find the fraction. So here, that's what you have. The denominator of a fraction, the downstairs, is five more than its numerator. So the denominator is five more than its numerator. And the sum of the fraction and its reciprocal, this is the reciprocal of that. Remember, think of topsy-turvy. Every time you think of reciprocal, think of topsy-turvy. 
So the sum of this fraction and its reciprocal is 3, 1 over 24. 3, 1 over 24 is 73 over 24. All right, I've just changed this directly. 3, 1 over 24 is 73 over 24. And, you know, bring this to the same base. And then what you have is x squared plus x plus 5 squared. Expand this and you get that x squared plus 10x plus 25. This is a result of expanding this. All right. Do your housekeeping. This is 2x squared plus 10x plus 25. Do your housekeeping. At the bottom is x squared plus 5x. Just do your housekeeping and multiply across. So it's 24 times the whole lot and this is 73 times this. All right. Multiply it out. You get 48x squared plus 240x. 24 times 25 is 600. Bring your calculator out, you know, do the calculation. 24 times 25 is 600. And on your right, you have 73 x squared plus 73 times 5 is 365 x. All right, now, you know, do your housekeeping. 73, you bring that over is uh, 73 minus 48. 73 minus 48 is 25. 365 minus 240 is 125. 600, when you bring it across, is minus 600. And, you know, what's screaming at you from this question is divide by 25. All right, because all these are factors of 25. So when you divide by 25, you get this x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals to 0. That's what you get when you divide across by 25. Okay, so now you have that. Uh, you can, what's this doing here? Okay, now what, when you have that, what you can do is just uh, uh, factorize this thing. And when you factorize this thing, you can apply, you know, um, the, the, the zero product property and you get X equals to minus eight and X equals to three. Okay, remember, what are you, what are you trying to solve? We are trying to solve this. The denominator of a fraction is five more than its numerator. The sum of the fraction and the reciprocal is three and a one over 24, find a fraction. So here you found X, which means the fraction you're finding is three over eight. Why three over eight? Because three is your, your numerator, eight is your denominator. The denominator is five greater than your numerator. So three over eight. 3 plus 5 equals to 8. So the, the fraction that you obtain is 3 over 8. And we have to check that 3 over 8 plus its, its uh, reciprocal equals to bring this to the common uh, you know, factor 24 and you get a 9 plus 64 and that 9 plus 64 is a 73. And 73 is uh, over 24, 72 over 24 plus 1 over 24 and that is 3, 1 over 24. So you have got your fraction, your fraction. What's your fraction? Your fraction is three over eight. The denominator is five more than the numerator and the sum of the fraction and its reciprocal is indeed three, one over 24. So this is how you do uh, such questions. Oh, we have one more question. Fantastic, fantastic. One more question. Denominator of a fraction is one more than twice the numerator. Gosh, okay, the denominator, the downstairs is one more than twice the numerator. If the sum of the fraction and its reciprocal is 2, 16 over 21, find a fraction and you have it there. The denominator, the downstairs is one more than two times the numerator. The sum of the fraction and its reciprocal, reciprocal is topsy-turvy equals to 2, 16 over 21. You can't work with this. So, you know, transform this to 58 over 21, all right? Once you have done that, you know the drill, right? Put it to the, you know, the common uh, denominator, you know, uh, multiply this out and you get a 4x squared plus 4x plus one. This is an expansion of just this, expand it, all right? Do your, your, your housekeeping because the, the, the numerator here is a complete mess. Do your housekeeping, x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared plus 4x plus 1. The denominator is 2x squared plus x, and that equals to 58 over 21. Now, uh, what's this begging you to do is to do a cross multiplication. So bring 21 up here and bring this up to 58. 
So that's what you get. Multiply it out 58 times 5 uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, there seems to be a little bit of a problem here. In any case, what you do is this 58 times 5. What's 58 times 5? 58, let me get my calculator out, okay? Uh, let me get my calculator. 58 times 5 is 290, right? So this is 290. 4 times 58, 4 times uh, 58 is uh, 232. So this is uh, 232. Let me get this out here. This is a, oh gosh. Again, it's not responding. 232. Okay, and this is uh, 58. I don't know how that got there. All right, in any case, 21 times two is a 42, all right, and this is a 21. Okay, uh, and when you have that, just you know, solve this one and you should be able to get your solution now. Let's solve this, okay, let's get rid of this. What you have here is 290 minus 42, 290 minus 42 is 248, 248 X squared. All right, let's bring this across. Okay, uh, this 248 is 290 minus 42, 232 minus 21. 232 minus, 232 minus 21 is 211. Okay, so that's a 211 X. Okay, and that is plus 58. equals to zero. Okay, and of course we can solve this and once we solve this, we have our equation. Let me just check this, okay? This is 221 times this, yes, this times 58, yes, so that is, um, what's happening here? This is, gosh, I got it right just now. I apologize for this, okay? It's, it's, it's super, uh, super unbecoming. Uh, let me get this, okay? Now it's right. What's wrong is this? This is 21, okay? And this is 58. This is entirely correct, all right? I apologize for this, okay? Now, all right, so here you've got your, you know, you've got your 21 times this and your 58 times that, all right? So 58 times two is 116, 58 times X is 58. 21 times 5 is 105, 21 times, times, 21 times 4 is 84, 21 times 1 is a 21. Now, uh, 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 bring the 105 over, 116 minus 105 is an 11, 58 uh, minus 84 is 26x, 21, bring that over, you get a minus 21. Factorize that and you get x minus 3 times 11x plus 7, all right? And what you do is this, um, okay, what you do is very, very simple. You, 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 you know, get your uh, uh, zero product rule and you get an X equals to three. And here, uh, 11 X plus seven, uh, you, it gives you 11, X equals to minus seven over 11, which you, you know, you discard this. And that's why the X is there, you discard it. And you discard it because X equals to three is the only solution. Uh, remember, the denominator of a fraction is one more than twice the numerator. So the sum of the fraction is, and its reciprocal is 2, 16 over 21. So what is the fraction you are after? You've got x, x equals to 3. So what is your denominator? Your denominator is twice x plus 1. So the fraction that you are after is 3 over 7. All right, so three over seven plus seven over three. And when you do the math, you will see that uh, you, you take it to a, you know, a common base of 21, that would be nine plus 49, that is 58 over 21. And you see that that's two sixteen over 21, which matches what you need. So the fraction that you are after is three over seven. All right, three over seven plus seven over three gives you two sixteen over 21. All right, the denominator of the fraction is one more than twice the numerator. Twice the numerator would be six. One more than twice the numerator is seven. So three over seven is the fraction you are after. All right, so that ends today's lesson.
All right, a couple of glitches which I apologize for. Now, in the next two weeks, I'm going to come up with new topics. So next week is going to be indices. All right, we're going to look at indices from 7 p.m. same time next week, and two weeks from today, we're going to look at certs. All right, so they are popular topics. If you want to learn about indices and certs, please come online next week and the week after. All right, and uh, thank you for. Thank you for coming and thank you for attending this lesson. All right, and I'll see you. I hope to see you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next week. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.